This video is supported by Private Internet Access. With unlimited data for just $2.91 per month, they've got your VPN needs absolutely covered. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CPMod here back with another video and we are here with another update in the student video kind of series of videos that I have been doing. Now, this series came about as myself, well, I am a student and when I was going ahead and looking into studying in the IT world, I didn't find a whole bunch of information of people who were actually studying themselves. I found a lot on the doctor side, the other lawyers side and stuff like that, but there wasn't too many people who studied IT who then actually went ahead and just talked about what it was like actually studying IT. So this series is all about exactly that. Now I'll do my best to leave the other videos linked down in that description box. If you are thinking about studying in the IT world, well then this series might be just for you. So in this video we'll be going over what went down in the last year of study and also to trying to answer the big question of should I really study in the IT world. So with that being said, that's what we're talking about here today. And I thought I'll touch on a couple other things that might still also to be applicable, uh, not only to IT students, but also to other students out there. But first, yes, as I did mention, I am a student. I recently completed my social degree in IT and um, I would hold up my big degree thing, but hasn't arrived yet, which is a little bit disappointing, I guess. Australia Post is a little bit slow and also too it's only been like a couple weeks since they've calculated the marks so I doubt they've even actually printed the poster things but either way I've gone ahead and completed it transcripts are out which is all good to see so uh, let's go ahead and look back at the year at what has sort of been what has been like studying the associate degree some things that have popped up and uh, really just have a bit of a chat from my personal experience again this is from my experience and my view I'm sure other people have different views and different ideas so take it with what it actually is. Now, when we talk about studying IT, IT is kind of like a big umbrella that a lot of people kind of just don't really understand. So there's a lot of bits and pieces for IT. For me, I was studying more of the admin and uh, server side rather than programming and coding type of side of IT. And just like how a, every single doctor isn't a finger doctor, they're, well, whatever specialist type of doctor that they might be. I honestly don't know, I'm not a doctor myself, but you get my point, just like many other fields of study, IT is just the umbrella, but there's a lot of different parts underneath the umbrella of IT, which you can go ahead and study. Again, for me, I'm more on the admin and server and uh, sort of working side rather than the programming and uh, that type of side. So for me, that's where my experiences come from and that is what I'm going to be talking about here today. So the first thing that I'll go ahead and actually mention and talk about in this series is um, keeping an eye on what you're gonna be doing after you finish your degree or your course or whatever you may be doing. So for me, each month I'll go ahead and log on to Seek, which here in Australia is like a job posting site where lots of companies go ahead and just post their um, jobs. Obviously, I'm sure different companies have, or different countries have different companies that do exactly the same thing right here. But go ahead and just have a look at the jobs that you would like to do and get an idea of what they are requiring. Now for me, I again did prefer the admin and kind of system support line of work in the IT side rather than programming. So for courses, I'll need to look into things that do admin and support rather than taking programming classes, which was kind of an obvious thing right there. But keeping your sort of eye on where you want to be is really helpful. Again, on the flip side, if I was more into programming, I'd be going ahead and looking into classes that are like C++, HTML, JavaScript, and all those more programming oriented classes. Because sure, you can study in IT, but you may want to be over there. And by the time you finish your degree, you might be over here, which is a bit of a problem right there. So definitely the first thing that I did notice is keeping my eye on sort of what is coming up next after university as I was finishing up my degree right there I did need to keep an eye on what was next and that's definitely something that I do say a lot is um Keep an eye on where you want to be and pick those classes to get to where you want to be. Now, another thing that I always say in these videos is keep an open mind. I probably sound like a broken record if you've watched the other videos and now you're watching this one, but just keep your mind open to not only the different ideas and concepts, but also to the different classes that you may be going hand taking and then subsequently different jobs that may actually come out of it. Now, I did mention I love the more admin side of Windows and servers, deploying systems, that kind of stuff, and not exactly as much over on the programming side. 
However, I did keep an open mind and not only did I complete our programming classes, but that also to open up a new line of work, being something like DevOps, for instance, which is basically taking sort of like system admin and programming and kind of like putting them together. Obviously, we can go in a lot more detail, but just on a simple level, um, there's definitely a lot of different things that can come of it uh, just by keeping an open mind, which is something that I do really recommend. And this also too extends to not only the classes you take, but also to the ideas and projects you work on. You might get given a project in a class and you might have this idea in your head which is super brilliant and then someone comes up with another idea which is completely different from yours but actually turns out to be a really good idea as well. So not sort of shutting yourself off from everyone else, uh, working with other people and just kind of I guess uh, communicating and making connections is also to something that is really important. We'll touch on this a little bit later in the video but when you go to college or university or whatever you do go to, especially in IT, it's not so much about what you learn rather than who you actually meet in the university courses. For me, I've actually met a large a number of people who have built up a really awesome network that I definitely know for a fact that any problem I have in IT, I'm sure one of them can definitely help me out, which is really awesome as well. So I will touch on this a little bit later on in the video, but just keeping yourself there with an open mind is something that is a really, really good thing to do. Great example of this, again, for me, I'm not so much on the programming side, but I did go ahead and complete some programming courses because it was, well, for me, a requirement to get the degree. But either way, I kept my mind open for it. I wasn't the biggest fan of programming, but literally, I really got into it. Something clicked in the end for me, and I was able to complete my entire semester assignment in just nine hours. Something that was meant to take us like, I think eight to 10 weeks, I did in nine hours and got 99.5% for my final mark on that particular class. So for me, I wasn't really sort of interested in programming, but I kept an open mind, went into it and actually learned quite a bit and managed to absolutely smash out that course. So even if you don't like something, keep an open mind. You might actually find something that you maybe not like so much, but actually aren't too bad at. I guess also too, keeping on the study kind of subject, study the things that you like, not necessarily what you probably should. So this is a great example for me. I do absolutely love, again, the more admin side of uh, IT. And for me, that is the subjects that I went ahead and picked. And in doing so, I was able to do all the classes without really feeling like I was studying or doing that much work. For instance, um, I was able to go ahead and complete the entire week's worth of labs in like a couple hours, because they were just really, really easy for me because I absolutely love this type of stuff. So find something that clicks for you and absolutely run with it. If you're into game development, take some courses on game development. If you're into web programming, take something that's into web programming, find something you like and roll with it because you'll not only get things done a lot faster, you'll understand it and most importantly, you'll enjoy what you are doing because at the end of the day, no one's forcing you to go to this course. It's not like grade school or something like that when you kind of have to go, otherwise the government's gonna come and get you in trouble um, depending on what country you live in anyway, but you're basically there because you want to be there. So pick something you, you actually want to study and go ahead and run with that. I guess kind of changing gears a little bit, and this is a little bit more for students in general, and that is don't have a really heavy laptop. Now, for instance, I ran this guy right here, the XPS 15. This is the 9550 model. Really, really lovely laptop. I absolutely love this laptop. If anyone asks me what kind of Windows laptop should I buy and they don't list a price or they don't list anything else, XPS 15 is my first recommendation I go ahead and make as I slam that into the desk down there. So um, basically I ran that laptop for quite a few months. In fact, an entire year I ran that guy and it was an absolute powerhouse, but really it was just too big, too heavy and just not practical. I ended up actually completing my degree with a 2013 MacBook Pro base spec model that had been upgraded to 256 gig SSD and had a dual core i5 and eight gigs of RAM, which if you're thinking, you studied IT with a super low in system. Like, what are you doing? Why didn't you stick with your XPS 15 with like eight threads, i7, 32 gigs of RAM and all that stuff? Uh, simply just because of weight. It was just too heavy to carry around, especially for me. I had very long days with a lot of moving from class to class, depending on what university you go to. Some universities are spread across an entire city. Some of them are just on one smaller campus. Uh, but for me, walking from room to room, carrying this laptop around, 
it just really wasn't that great for me and I really didn't like the amount of weight that it added and to be clear I got through it with that and in fact other people got through with the 12 inch MacBook there was people who didn't even bring a laptop to class they just used these standard computer lab uh, computers obviously depending on what you're actually studying in terms of IT you're just basically always in a computer lab so there's a bit of a getaway with that um, but depending on what classes you study you don't necessarily need a super big or super high-end computer I'm in 2019 right now and I'm still getting away with a laptop from 2013 so you don't necessarily need the super high-end stuff now that being said we are IT people and we love our gadgets and the latest and greatest and best specs and that kind of stuff but um Honestly, I'll take that 2013 MacBook Pro any day over that XPS 15 just because it is so much lighter, which is something I never thought I'd actually find myself actually saying. Um, also too, I guess sort of as a general thing for students is take advantage of your being a student. Take advantage of the services, the discounts, the free lunches, the free rooms that you can take out. Just take advantage of everything. For me, unfortunately, I didn't do so much of this myself. Um, I did, for instance, take advantage of, say, the discounted phone rates, so I could basically get around $70 a month plan for like $30 a month which was a decent saving but for me I never unfortunately really used up all of these services so uh, just remember that you're paying to be there so go ahead and get your money's worth and use all the rooms that they offer you use all the services that they offer you take all the discounts you can get uh, because you're basically paying for this at the end of the day thousands on thousands of dollars you're paying so go ahead and use it because it is definitely worth it. And this also too, I guess, gets to something that always just makes me kind of wonder what is going through people's minds. We're paying thousands, in some cases, tens of thousands of dollars to be here and people are skipping classes. Like, I just don't understand this concept of some students. They're paying, I know I was paying tens of thousands of dollars. I know they were paying tens of thousands of dollars to go to the same course. And yet they're joking about how they're going to skip class tomorrow. I'm just like, like, you're paying to be here. Imagine buying a ticket to a concert and then just not showing up because you just couldn't be bothered to go. You'd either try and get your money back or you'd just go because you paid to be there. So why why would you pay to university and then not show up? That's something that always kind of got me kind of weird, like why would you pay but then not actually go? Either way, just one of those things to keep in mind, you're paying to be there, so actually go show up and I guess you might learn some stuff, maybe you won't, but at least you'll go ahead and meet some people. And I guess that then brings us to the really big question of this video is should I go ahead and study in the IT? field and the, and, the, and the answer is that sort of one of those hard to answer ones and most likely the answer is yes but depends on where you are in your IT career and depends on where you are in the world and where you want to be. I definitely think studying is the most important thing but studying correctly is even more important because you could go to college and you can get a degree and all that kind of stuff but if you just want to do like basic phone repairs there's not much point getting a degree if you just want to do basic phone repairs and something like a certificate or a certification would be much more applicable to where you want to go and what you want to do. For instance, a lot of more entry level IT positions, at least here in Australia anyway, speaking from looking at them online, um, just I actually don't need a degree. You just need some sort of certification or, or basic qualification to get you in the door. Whereas if you want to go into high end IT administration, engineering, that kind of stuff, you do then need a degree to get your foot in the door in those higher end places but if you're already working in IT then going off and getting a degree may not necessarily be that beneficial and just doing some certifications that can upskill you and doing some easy stuff right there might be way more valuable to get a higher pay rise or go ahead and get to that next step in your career but at the same time it really comes down to what you want to do and where you want to end up going I definitely think yes you need to study how you study and what you study is definitely going to be different for everybody out there. And to be 100% clear, everything in IT from programming to server setup, development, all that kind of stuff can be learned on the internet. If you just Google whatever your problem is, you can learn it really, really easily. But for me, the most important part to going to these like school kind of places is not actually the stuff you learn, because a lot of time you're going to forget it by the time you go up and get a job, but it's the people who you meet. Again, as I did mention earlier in the video, I made a great network of friends that basically have really broad range of skills, from awesome programmers to epic networkers to people who are well into web programming. There's a lot of people that I do have basically in my phone that I can message at any time within reason. And 
and get a response from what they do love to do. And this also too works the other way. They know they can contact me because I do love the more admin side. So if they get stuck with an admin problem, they can hit me up. If I get stuck with a networking problem, I can hit one of my friends up. It is really awesome to do a whole bunch of networking when you're at these places rather than learning the stuff that they actually teach you. Sure, you need to fill out and do your classes, but go ahead and connect with some people, talk to some other people in your classes and make those connections because I can guarantee you you're not going to find those kind of connections anywhere else and it is absolutely priceless. So sure, the skills you learn are helpful, but man, the people that you meet is absolutely priceless and most of the time is really awesome because who knows what's going to happen in the future. Let's say five years down the line, that person starts a company and they need you with your skills. Boom, now you know that person. You can go off and work with them. So not only can it help you with, oh, well, you've got a problem, you need it fixed, but also too, down the line, you never know what is going to be coming up. So definitely, yeah, you should study how and where is going to be different. Uh, for instance, here in Australia, we have the TAFE system that offers certificates in different uh, places of education. So for instance, you can get a certificate for in IT here in Australia, which I believe is the equivalent to an A plus in the US, but don't quote me on that one. I have no idea how the US education system works, but essentially you can get a cert for here in Australia and that will get you into most entry level kind of positions, whether they'll be hardware repair, hardware technicians, or some sort of basic uh, IT support. Um, really great way to get your foot in the door and those TAFE certificates are cost effective and really easy to complete. It's a lot of the basics like this is a USB port, this is an ethernet cable, this is how things connect and just very basic level. Kind of just shows you know how to use a computer. Obviously from there you can go up into your degrees and your diplomas and your bachelors and your bits and pieces there right there to go ahead and get into obviously more higher end places. And especially here in Australia you can basically drop out of school, get yourself a cert for in IT and work your way all the way up to a doctorate in IT. It is a complete easy path to go ahead and do and um, I've seen it done a number of times so you can basically drop out of school and still become a doctorate in whatever subject you do like. And I guess that then brings us to sort of the end of the video. And if I had to kind of just summarize what I would say when it comes to studying on IT is just, just do it. Go ahead and study something, get yourself a bit of upskilling and it's definitely gonna be a worthwhile thing. From a student standpoint, there's a lot of things you can take advantage of. I really did enjoy my time studying in the associate degree. I met a lot of awesome people and that is sort of the most important stuff when it comes to this whole thing is just meeting people, learning learning some skills along the way and making those connections and really just go ahead and do it. It sounds kind of cliche, but just do it and you will definitely learn something along the way. And again, meet some people there. But guys, let me know down in that comment sections if you have any sort of uh, additional things. These are kind of my two cents, but let me know what your two cents are. If you are thinking of being a student and you want to have a chat with me, let me know down in that comment sections. I would love to have a chat with you guys down there. But guys, again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.